Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining me for another Python tutorial on the TK Inter library. I know that this is the Easter period, so many of you will be on holiday, so we will keep this tutorial shorter than usual, but still, I didn't want to miss our weekly appointment. Also, I should say a massive thank you to all of you who subscribe to the channel and are showing your support by writing the comments and leaving questions. It really means a lot to me and I'm extremely grateful to you all. For all of you who haven't subscribed yet, I invite you to do so so that you don't miss out on future videos and help to support the channel in bringing coding knowledge to as many people as possible. Now then, returning to today, we will concentrate on something extremely simple but also very important. That is, the configuration of our labels. So far we've seen how to generate them and how to position them on the screen, but we haven't really analysed in depth how to actually configure them in terms of their look and their aesthetics. So we will of course start off by writing a label and saying for example label1 equals tk.label and of course we will give it our root window and then we will say that text is equal to Python. Then, of course, we will say label one dot pack. Now then, some of the standard options which you may wish to configure your label for are, for example, the background color, which we can write as BG and say that this is, for example, uh, green. And then, of course, the color of the text, which in this case is known as the foreground color and this can be equal to black. Finally, we can also write that the width of our label is given by a certain number of characters. In this case, we would say that width is equal to six, for example, which is the number of characters within the word Python. Finally, another parameter which is quite common for everybody to change is the font type and the font size. We can do this by writing font equals, and in this case it will be a tuple, with the first, which could be Arial, and that's the font type, and then we have a comma followed by the font size. For example, we can say 14. Now then we can run the code as usual by pressing the F5 key, and you can see that we have a label which has been correctly configured to have six characters, it has a green background, has a black writing with Arial type font and 14 type character. Of course you might ask, what happens if we change the font size? For example, we say this is now 28, which is double what we had before. Well, since the label width has been set to 6, namely 6 characters, the overall size of the label will reconfigure itself automatically to now be able to hold six characters of font size 28. So again, if we run the code, you can see that the label has become bigger and now holds six characters with font size 28. We should, however, remember one important consideration, and that is that some of the settings for the pack command, which we saw in previous episodes, linked above by the way, will override the settings of our label. So, for example, if within the pack command we say tk.fill, or better still, fill equals tk.x, then when we run the code, you can see that the label has filled the entire x size. Why? Because independently of what the size of the label is, once we've packed it within our display, we've told it to occupy the full space along the x axis. Now, here on the screen you can also see several other parameters which we can tweak for our label. Obviously, we don't have time to go through them all, but should you have any queries about any specific parameters, then feel free to leave a question in the comments below and I will address your query as soon as possible. As promised, I will let you all now get back to your holidays and I thank you once again for tuning in to today's video. Again, should you wish to help support the channel, then please consider liking the video and especially subscribing. I wish you all a pleasant week, and until next time, happy coding!